Are you sure? Mm-hmm. They're delicious, dear, but I'm, I'm full. <laughs> you feel good now? I mean, uh, contented after a nice meal and everything? Well, yes, yes, I feel fine. Why? Oh, I just wanted to make sure you were satisfied. Good spirits, comfortable. Joni, do you have something to tell me? Bradley J. Stevens, just because I want to find out if you feel good, you think I have something to tell you. <laughs> Brad. Yes? I have something to tell you. <laughs> okay. What is it? You know my kid sister, Beverly. Well, I got a letter from my folks, and they thought it would be a wonderful idea if she enrolled at Southside Junior College and lived here with us. Y your sister live with us? Yes. Oh, but Beverly's only 19 years old, and our friends are much older. She wouldn't have anyone her own age around here. That's exactly what I thought. So that's what I wrote to my folks. Oh, good. But look at their answer. <laughs> yeah, they say that you'll meet plenty of girls her own age at school, and, well, it would be wonderful for her to spend some time with our friends, too. Well, yes, honey, but, but what if Beverly gets lonesome? She could get very lonesome, you know, away from home for months. You know, the same thing occurred to me. So when I got this letter, that's what I wrote to my folks. <laughs> But look what they say. Huh? Yeah. They say that she was away to camp for three months last year and loved it. They're sure she won't get lonesome. Oh, well, I, I know, honey, but what makes them so sure that Beverly would like living with us? Maybe, maybe she'd hate it. She loves it. Yeah, and, and what about the college courses? Are you sure that Southside has the courses your sister wants? Besides, Tony, it's, it's, uh... <laughs> It's fairly obvious that the jury in this case has already reached a verdict. Okay, dear. Sister goes to Southside and stays here with us. Oh, Brad, you're the most wonderful husband in the whole world. Well, you might as well write and tell her to come. Beverly, we're in the kitchen. Down in a minute, Joan. Joan. What's the matter, dear? You said you wanted her to come. After all, there are some wives who wouldn't even ask their husband's opinion. Joni, I'm home. Hello, dear. Hello, lover. Well, uh, how did things work out here today with Bev? Just fine. She registered at junior college today, and she says she's just going to love it. Well, I uh, hope things work out all right with uh, someone living here in the house. Oh, it'll be wonderful. It'll be terrific having a teenager like Bev in the house. And, and it'll make us feel young and... Uh, uh, Joni, Joni, uh, what's all the stuff here? I can't get my coat in. Oh, well, the closet was so tiny up in the guest room that I told Beverly to put a few little things in the hall closet. <laughs> a few little things? But, honey, I can't even get the coat in. Oh, don't be... Billy. Well, all right, dear, you put it in. Well, sure. <laughs> Any uh, mail, honey? It's right there on the desk, honey. Oh. <laughs> there are a few things, but it's certainly easy to get one coat in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a letter from Paul and Sally. <laughs> oh, I'll have to answer them tomorrow, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, <laughs> it's a letter from Gordy. It's always nice to hear from Gordon. <laughs> yeah, he's a, you know that they're He's coming. <laughs> oh, he hasn't changed a bit. 
I couldn't get your coat in, dear. There was nothing to it. Oh, well, uh, well thank you, dear. Uh, well, while you're at it, uh, you can hang this one up. <laughs> your jacket? Yeah, honey, I want to get comfortable. Oh, honey, I, I think you ought to keep your jacket on. Well, why? Well, after all, Beverly's still a guest in the house, and you shouldn't be sitting around in your shirt sleeves. You know, dear, she's just at the age now where she's very conscious of culture and breeding and... What a drag it's been today. Boy, am I pooped. Now that Beverly's been with us almost a whole day, don't you just love her? Well... I knew you would. It's, it's just a matter of getting used to a teenager, that's all. They may do some peculiar things, but... Joan, Joan, what is this? <laughs> Look! Brad, your picture's in the paper. <laughs> Joan, half the page is gone. Oh, so... <laughs> I'll bet I know how that happened, dear. The newsboy must have thrown the paper up on the porch and hit a very sharp edge of the drain pipe and very <laughs> large hole. Joni, I know and you know how this happened. Yes, I guess it's very obvious. There's a paper hole thief in the vicinity, Dad. This was a list of the 50 latest jazz records. Your sister tore up the paper before I even had a chance to read it. Now, Joni, that is not oh, right. That is not... Honey, look what time it is. Weren't you supposed to call George McDonald tonight? Oh, my gosh, you're absolutely right. I... As a matter of fact, I started to call him two or three times before, but your sister was on the phone. <laughs> well, don't forget, I just arrived here in town today. Yes, just today. And I've hardly had time to finish unpacking, and I'm... <laughs> Miss Alexander Graham Bell is still at it. Well, Brad, it may be a very important call. After all, Beverly just registered at junior college today, and she might be talking to some professor about some subject she's taking. Of course it's okay to kiss a boy on your very first date if you really love him. It could be her biology teacher. Look, Joan. I consider myself a very patient man, but how much am I expected to stand? I come home to find my dresser taken over, pink slips in my sock drawer, the paper torn before I had a chance to read it. I can't even use the phone! Well, I know it hasn't been easy for you, dear, but I hate to give Beverly a big lecture on her very first day here. Well, all right, Joan, but... I know she's my sister, but I'd do the same thing for your relatives, too, Brad. All right, dear. I'll remember that. I'll get used to it, I suppose. Well, I'm uh, going to make some notes for court tomorrow. Thanks, dear. Everything will calm down. You'll see. All right, Joan. I hope so. Oh, dear! <laughs> Brad, you found Beverly's box of chocolates. <laughs> Must there be hard centers? <laughs> see how nice and quiet the house is now, dear? Mm-hmm. Now that Beverly is used to her surroundings, everything's going to be calm and peaceful. You see how nice and early she went to bed tonight? Mm-hmm. What was that? What? I didn't hear anything. There. I didn't hear it that time again. Joey! Joey! Look at that picture. Brad, an earthquake. Earthquake, honey. Let's get out of the house. You know all earthquakes. Yes, yes, yes. There's an earthquake, all right. There's an earthquake named Beverly. Joni, I've had enough. I'm going to the lawyer's club where I can get some peace and quiet. No, Brad. No, don't try and stop me, honey. I just want to get my coat and go. <laughs> Are you sure you forgive me, dear, even though my sister upset your whole routine last night? Well, honey, there's nothing to forgive. And you're not mad at Beverly anymore? No, honey, like you said, blood is thicker than water. And if Bev did anything to annoy me, I'm just gonna forget about it. And you don't mind the paper being cut again? No. 
No, of course not, because I'm sure if the same occasion arose, you'd be just as tolerant of my relative. You know it. <laughs> oh, you're wonderful, Brad. Can I get you something, a cup of coffee, dear? Uh, no, thank you, dear. Uh, I'll get it. Yes? Cousin Brad. Oh, why, Cousin Jack, come right in. Uh, Joni, this is uh, a Cousin Jack from Idaho. Your Cousin Jack? My uncle. Oh, yes, yes, his father owns one of the largest potato plantations in Idaho. Right, Jack? Yes, sir, he, Dad's done all right in the potato business, considering he started on a shoestring. In fact, that's what he's growing now, shoestring potatoes. Oh, <laughs> 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 Broke mine. Yes, sir, I think you folks will find me mighty pleasant company to have around. Pleasant company? Oh, did I forget to tell you? I just entered college here today and thought I'd give you folks a break and live with you a while. <laughs> hey, this joint is all right. <laughs> well, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Joni, Joni, you better uh, get the boy something to eat. He, he must be hungry. Well, I'm all out of Idaho potatoes. <laughs> Why don't you try one of our California grapes? Uh. <laughs> Get it? Howdy, Cousin Brad. Why, come right in. It, it's it's uh, Cousin Fred. Cousin Fred? Uh, yes, yes, he's my uh, cousin from Texas. Oh, Cousin Fred? Cousin Joni. <laughs> 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 Joan, uh, he's my Aunt Elizabeth's boy. I got news for your Aunt Elizabeth. He's no longer a boy. <laughs> Look, uh, how's your uh, mother, Cousin Fred? Oh, just fine, fine. You know, the last thing she told me just before I left Texas was, Fred, when you get out to California, you must look up your cousins Brad and Joan. I know they'd be just delighted to put you up to a different college. <laughs> so here I am in California. I bet you've never been in this part of Texas before. <laughs> well, step up. I want you to meet a, another cousin of yours that's going to stay here for a while. Uh, uh, for a while, this is cousin uh, Jack, your cousin Fred. <laughs> Won't you have some fruit? Oh, this one better get some more fruit. <laughs> Now listen, boys, you, you know what you're getting paid for. Uh, do a good job and get it over just as soon as possible. <laughs> oh. Fred, I'd like to talk to you about those cousins of yours because I... <laughs> Why, Brad, how are you? Oh, fine. Why, uh, uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, uh, Joni, uh, uh, don't you know who this is? Well, from the smoke signals he's sending up, it must be your Aunt Minnetonka's boy. Joan, do you mean you don't know who this is? Maybe I would if I could see him. <laughs> no, Joan, it's your cousin Dave. My cousin Dave. Well, hello, cousin Dave. Glad to meet you, cousin Joan. I want you to meet some of your other cousins. Uh, uh, cousin Dave. Uh, this is Cousin Jack, your Cousin Fred. <laughs> oh, yeah. Won't you have some fruit? Oh, you have been having a lot of stuff. Yeah. Who are you? Sam. Well, I didn't hire you. What are you doing here? Dave invited me. <laughs> oh, oh, uh... Here, why don't you have some fruit, boys? Well, Joni, Joni, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, Sam. Uncle Sam? No, <laughs> cousin Sam. Yeah, <laughs> cousin Joni. Oh, later. Uh, <laughs> you your cousin Fred and your cousin Jack and your Jack, cousin Fred, Dave and well. cousin Sam. <laughs> Fred. Yes, sir. Are you sure these are your cousins? Joan, you said you'd welcome my relatives. Are you implying these boys are fakes? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get some hard fruit. Now listen, you get out of here. Why did you bring him? What could I do? He's my cousin. <laughs> Where are you getting all this fruit? The same place you're getting all those cousins. <laughs> Clean it up.
Boy, do you need glasses. I don't mind you saying I need glasses, but please don't call me a boy. Boy! <laughs> Cousin, I don't have a date yet for the dance Saturday night, so why don't you and I get together? The answer to that problem is cosine B plus 2 equals X. Huh? Hey, by golly, you're right. I know. The cosine B won't take me to that dance. <laughs> and uh, the answer to that one is uh, 3 times tangent Y over H equals infinity. This girl is a genius. Yes, but what she's trying to convince you is that this genius is a girl. <laughs> you know, it takes two to tango. Say, uh, maybe you can help me. What is the conjugation of the Latin verb to carry? A feral foray to the lattice. And about that thing. Say, what's the, what's the specific gravity of ammonium sulfate? A 1.4728. Hey, wait a minute. Tell me this. If a horse can run seven furlongs in 58 seconds carrying 116 pounds, how fast can he make a mile and a quarter carrying 112? 203 and two-fifths. How did that get in the book of numbers? Hey, this kid is terrific. Amazing. Right. All right, all right. Hold it, hold it, boys. Hold it. The line forms at the right. Now we'll be very happy to answer all of your questions if you'll just answer one of mine. Why, sure, sure, anything sure, you say. Uh, are you boys really Brad's cousins? Well, I'll tell you... Uh, just um, a second. Uh, fellas, huddle. <laughs> now, look, boys. If we aren't cousins, we lose a cozy setup, and you can't get to use that encyclopedia that walks like a girl. That's right. You know, if we stick around that female, <laughs> Professor Einstein, we'll never even have to crack a book. Right. Good. That's Let's good. go. Well... Would you mind repeating that question, Cousin Joan? <laughs> Boys, come on. Right over here. That's it. Yeah. You stand over there. Clear this space in here. Let's see, you all How are we doing, Cousin Brad? Yeah. Any last minute instructions? No, that's all right. Over there now. Here we go. There we go. Judy, <laughs> Judy, come here. These boys are getting in shape for college. Mm. They're wasting their time in college. They're ready for television. Yeah, well, honey, I gotta go back to court. I'll see you later, dear. <laughs> Pardon, old man. That's it. Jack, come here. I want you to take a look at this. Take this. <laughs> Jack, get this up. Wait a minute. Oh, what a magnificent pose. Girl with barbells. Just stand there. Oh. Hold it. Don't move. Who's got straight to move? Take both. Oh, how could you do such a thing? Where's the water? I couldn't get There. What do you think of it? Oh, it's a very nice likeness. Yes, sir. Look, Joni, I, I know I tried to pull a trick on you, and it backfired on both of us, so just let me call the police and have them throw those boys out of here. Well, Brad, you're in no position to get involved with the police. Besides, it serves you right hiring those four phonies to claim they're your cousins. I hired three. <laughs> the fourth one wasn't a real phony. He was a phony phony. I just don't like the idea of them sleeping here all night. But in the morning, we'll get rid of them. With the mathematical scheme that Beverly figured out, they'll be glad to leave us. All right, honey. Let's get to bed. <sighs> Good night, lover. Good night, dear. Mm. Good night, Cousin Brad, Cousin Joan. Okay, I'll, I'll get one. Ah, 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 it's Cousin Brad's turn in the bathroom. Now you'll have to wait your turn. Here, I'll give you a schedule. Out of bed, 702, full of cut 703. Toast, 712, eggs, 715. They're three-minute eggs. What are we supposed to do, live by a timetable? Well, that's the only way here. Uh, up, go, 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 go,
the day I tried to get rid of fellas. And they were so cute, too. Oh, honey, don't worry. There's plenty more where they came from. <laughs> well, what are you fellas oh, doing? Oh, we to... love your schedule here. It gets us up early. It gives us more time to study. Yeah, if you make it 6 o'clock tomorrow, we can be out the track for the morning workouts. And I thought they were gone. They are real gone. Do Thank mm -hmm. you. 